for this blog called The Spicy Therapist. She actually wrote 11 important things that have helped me and my adult ADHD. And I started reading through them and I was like, oh, these are good. Thought, I'm gonna read this real quick and take it if you like it. And if you don't, don't worry about it. She says, I've had ADHD all my life, but I can still remember the feeling of shame in the pit of my stomach as I sat in my boss's office. I can still hear his voice. I do not understand it. A smart person with a master's degree, this same person can't get to work on time, really? Please explain that to me. And I couldn't explain it. I didn't understand it. Why I was constantly late, why my house was always a mess, why I never opened my email, my mail, mail. Um, why was I so competent in some areas of my life, but utterly tragic in others? That sounds familiar to some of you. Oh, so that experience pushed me to go to therapy. She was suggested I might have ADHD and I'm so thankful. Learned things that she's learned in managing her adult ADHD. Make friends with your flaws. One of the most valuable things I learned while doing my own therapy was how to become friends with my flaws. Essentially, I learned how to look at my character defects in a different way and to appreciate them. I, I need help with that. There are two sides or more to almost everything. Some of the things you hate about yourself if you think hard enough, you'll see another side, a side with positives. For example, it's almost impossible to be a hot ADHD mess and to not have a sense of humor about it. Uh, people with ADHD are usually funny. The fact that I'm a crappy planner also means that I'm awesome at going with the flow. This has really helped me in the past at work. My coworkers would never find me stressed, freaking out because my day didn't go as planned because I didn't have plans to begin with. Be, number two is be yourself and be honest with others. Those with ADHD are fantastic chameleons. We, excuse me, we are great at scanning people, recognizing what that person likes, and then appearing to be whatever that person likes. We do this for different reasons, mostly because we are ashamed of who we really are and because we fear rejection. I promise when you are your authentic, imperfect self, people are drawn to that. People like authenticity because it makes them feel safe. Once you start being 100% you, you will attract people who like you for you. Um, you may lose some people along the way, but that's okay because those people probably aren't people you need to keep around anyway. Number three, ADHD doesn't define you and it doesn't need to hold you back. My ADHD is a part of me, but it's just a small part. I am so much more than my ADHD diagnosis. While I have my weaknesses, I also have many strengths. My ADHD makes certain things hard for me, but it doesn't mean I can't do the things I want to do. I needed to hear this. I don't know about you. It might take me longer to do certain things, or perhaps I will need to approach things in a different way, but if I really want it, I can make it happen. That's something we should say to ourselves every day. Number four, ADHD affects your emotions in a big way. How ADHD affects one's emotions isn't a subject that's talked about very often. Hello, we've talked about this. Because of the transitioning can make it hard to move on from unpleasant emotions. Many with ADHD also experience something called rejection sensitivity, sensitive dysphoria, which in action can look a lot like a depressive episode. Number five, accept that you are not normal. Stop trying to be normal. I have driven myself crazy on a number of occasions trying to work and organize my life like a normal person. Yep, I have this nasty cycle of getting motivated, spending a massive amount of time planning and creating schedules, then getting depressed when I couldn't stick to my plan or schedule. I was planning for who I wanted to be, not who I was. Oh, she's good. For example, I want to be a morning person so bad. I want to start work at 8 a.m. Sadly, I've never been and never will be a morning person, no matter how badly I want it. Unfortunately, penciling in a start time of 8 a.m. on my calendar doesn't magically make it so either. I've learned to look deeper at the things I want in order to satisfy my needs. For example, why is being a morning person appealing to me? Because I think people who start work earlier are more productive and able to get more done. Considering that, it's safe to say what I really want is to be productive and get things done. So I don't need to beat myself up about starting work at 10 a.m. as long as I am productive and getting stuff done. Um, speaking of workflow and ADHD, here are a couple other important things I've learned that have helped me. To allow myself to be flexible depending on how I'm doing mentally. Hello, that's a good one. For example, I might shift appointments and plans around if I haven't gotten enough sleep. I used to beat myself up in the past for not powering through my to-do list anyway, but I have accepted that if I can be flexible, then that means the quality of work will be better. And to help with procrastination, I focus on what it will be, what it feel like to have it completed. Keeping my focus on the end result is way more motivating than stewing on all the reasons I don't wanna do what I need to do. I needed that one too. Number six, learn to validate yourself. 
Don't look to others to tell you you're doing a good job or you're trying, etc. Learn to be proud of yourself and to be your own cheerleader. Number seven, it's difficult to find good professional help for adult ADHD. Don't expect to go to any old therapist or psychiatrist and for them to know all about ADHD. I've talked about this quite a bit. But unless they specialize in ADHD, they probably won't know enough to be helpful to you. And I add, it might be harmful. Okay. Do your best to seek out professionals that specialize or have worked with adult ADHD. I cannot emphasize that enough. That's my words. Number eight, medication helps, but don't expect it to fix everything. So true. It will help you focus, but you still need to know how to prioritize and direct that focus. Your medication sure is not going to do much for feelings of shame, resentment, etc. due to years of being told you're a loser by family and society. Therapy can help you with that. Medication is just a part of the treatment puzzle. She's, this is amazing. For me, daily self-care means getting enough sleep, exercising, meditating, and eating right. Those four things do help manage ADHD. Those four things, getting enough sleep is number one. Okay, number 10, learn what your ADHD gifts are and use them. Having a brain that is different can come with some pretty cool perks like creative problem solving and tenacity. I can actually feel other people's emotions. And because of this, I am very compassionate and great at understanding. Not to mention if someone's lying about or minimizing their feelings, I can see right through it. Me too, probably you. Uh, number 11, many people believe that hiring a babysitter or a maid is a luxury. I believe it's perfectly okay to view these things like an accommodation for ADHD. If you can afford it, consider it and don't feel bad about it. That's great. If you're an adult and you're just getting diagnosed, know that things will get better, but it won't happen overnight. You have been living your life and doing certain behaviors for a long time. It's only reasonable that change will also take some time. She's great. Um, I can't recommend her enough. I hope some of that might be helpful for you. It sure is for me so much. It's a blog called The Spicy Therapist. So if you want to look that up, Google it and you'll find her. Let me know what you think. So good. So good.